Hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is Brandon, and if you've been watching my content, you know that I absolutely love building cybersecurity labs. But in the past, it's always been a challenge to create these labs and share them with everybody because that would involve me writing all sorts of automation scripts and building an environment that was five or 10 machines, automating it all, and then distributing it to people was a real hassle, especially for me who just does this as a side project in my free time, right? But thankfully, a company called Snap Labs has created a free solution to remedy this problem. Essentially, Snap Labs allows you to spin up cybersecurity labs in AWS very easily and then share those labs with other people. And it, it all works seamlessly. And I think it's a really great product. And best of all, they just launched their community edition so you can use their software for absolutely free. Now, before we get into actually using Snap Labs and getting starting with it, I do wanna say that this is not a sponsored video. They're not paying me to say any of this. I just genuinely think that this is a great product and I'm going to be using this to create my own labs and share them with you all so we can all hack into them and learn together. So if you wanna check out the Snap Labs website, I'm gonna leave a link to it down below. You can see this is essentially what it looks like for when you're looking for the website and you can register for a free community edition account. All you need to get started is an AWS account because again, Snap Labs, is going to integrate with your own AWS account and run all of your instances on there. So while their platform is free, keep in mind that cloud hosting on AWS is not free and you will be charged for that, but you have full control over your own AWS account. So you have full insight into how much things are going to cost and you can stop them if you don't want to pay. But really this is going to be a very cheap way to share labs with people as opposed to maybe buying training courses or things like that, uh, which could be hundreds of dollars, right? So once you go ahead and sign up for a Snap Labs Community Edition account, this is what the interface is going to look like. When you first log in, they'll ask you to link your AWS account, which is very simple. You basically just log into your AWS account, click a few buttons, and they set it all up for you. And then once you have your Snap Labs and AWS accounts linked, you can start to deploy your own labs either from a from scratch or from some templates that they have predefined. So if we take a look here at the lab templates, they actually have a ton of public templates that are available that you could just go ahead and launch. And some of these are pretty big, like 20 machines, right? And, and they may sound familiar, like for example, Detection Lab is a really popular uh, GitHub repository that was used for all sorts of you know monitoring and logging and stuff like that. But you can just go ahead and launch that template right from Snap Labs, have it running in a minute or two, and you'll have full access to that environment on your own AWS account. So it's all private and in your own account. Now, for example, uh, if we were to get started with building a lab, we could go ahead and start from a template and build on it and then create a new template based on that, right? So you can keep building on those labs and making bigger and better templates. So for example, let's go ahead and start a lab. We'll go off of AD Quick Start 2019. So we can just go ahead and click on the launch button there. Now the template we're gonna use is their AD Quick Start. Now essentially this is just gonna have a domain controller and a server joined to the domain. So it's a very small lab. And let's go ahead and click launch. And that's gonna go ahead and spin that up on our AWS account and we can access it once it's finished launching. So that says it has launched. I'm gonna go over and click on my labs here. And you can see that this lab is still launching here. It can take a couple minutes for all of the AWS instances to spin up, but once that's done, we'll get a green light here and we'll know that it's good to go. All right, and our first lab just finished launching. So we can just go ahead and click on the manage button here and we're gonna get greeted with all sorts of different options because we can fully customize all aspects of these labs from adding machines, editing machines, saving them, snapshotting them, editing the network configs, everything. So anything that you could possibly want to do with this, you can do right through the interface. Anything that you could do uh, through the AWS console or things like that, you can do through the Snap Labs interface and it's much easier. So getting started with these labs, you'll notice that every lab is going to come with this admin box. Now this admin box comes pre-installed with Apache Guacamole for remote access into all your systems and with an open VPN server set up. So this way you can easily access a GUI to all of your machines via VNC or RDP through Apache Guacamole, or you could just connect with your open VPN setup for an attacker scenario so people can hack through your labs that way, right? So that's what this admin box is for, and that's gonna come by default on all your labs. But for example, now we have this domain controller and server as part of our AD Quick Start 2019 template. And if we wanna go ahead and access this domain controller just to configure it or whatever, we can click on this little icon here, and this will connect us to an Apache Guacamole session, and we'll connect over RDP right into that domain controller, which is awesome. It all works seamlessly. And another great thing is that the copy and paste works. So that is a huge plus when you're working with this stuff is we can finally copy and paste through the browser and get in here with Apache Guacamole, which is awesome. 
So we can close out of this and you could go ahead and remote into any of these servers. You know, you can use SSH as well for your Linux devices if they don't have VNC. So first let's talk about some of the machine specific things and then we'll talk about the labs as a whole. So we can see that we have two different machines that we can manage here. There's not much that we can do with the admin box besides stop or reboot it. But if we click on, for example, this domain controller, we could uh, snapshot it or edit it. So we could just go in and snapshot these machines individually if we want. We can also snapshot the lab as a whole, which we'll look at later. But we can click on snapshots here and you can create a new snapshot just for this machine, which is good if you want to, you know, test some new configs or anything that, you know, snapshots are typically used for. So we'll just go back here. Now, if we click on the domain controller again and go to edit it, so we can change some basic things here like the system name or the host name. Now, keep in mind, this host name doesn't actually change the host name of the machine itself. It's just for display purposes and Snap Labs. We can also go ahead and change the specs of it. So right now it has two vCPU, four gigs of RAM. Well, maybe we want to use a smaller instance so we have less of an AWS bill. You could go ahead and size that down or maybe you need more power, size it up, you know, whatever you decide to do. And another nice thing is they give you an estimated running cost. This isn't 100% accurate because they can't predict the actual cost of like storage and runtime and things like that, but it's good to have this estimate so you know beforehand what you're expecting to pay for these instances. You can also go ahead and configure the networking so you can add more network interfaces and things like that. So you can go ahead and put them on different subnets, add more IPs if you so wish. And then you can go ahead and change the credentials. So when we opened up that RDP session through Apache Guacamole, we were put in as administrator because it had credentials here, but you could change that. Maybe you'll want to give low privilege credentials or something like that. You can go ahead and change it. Uh, right now we're configured with remote desktop. You could specify different credentials here and have that available to people who are using your lab. So we can go ahead and close out of that. And that's really all there is to these specific systems here. So right now we have two machines in our lab. We have our domain controller and our server. Well, let's say we want to add another machine in here. We can just go ahead and click the add new machine button, specify a name. We'll just call it one host name, which is just for display purposes. We'll just call it one. And then we can go ahead and select an operating system. So they have a few to choose from and they're all already configured and you don't have to worry about it. You just basically click this button and launch it and it's all good to go. It syncs up with Apache Guacamole and it just works. It's awesome. So, you know, we could have Kali, Ubuntu, Windows Server, different versions, you know, all sorts of different operating systems. And I know they are planning on adding more in here as well based on their docs. So, for example, we'll just give an Ubuntu 2004 server. We'll hit next. You can specify the system type. So, you know, what kind of specs we want in here. And keep in mind, the higher specs, the more it's going to cost to run per hour. And we get that estimated running cost per hour right here. We'll just go ahead and click next. We'll specify a subnet to put it on. Right now, we just have our main subnet and go ahead and click launch. So that should go through and launch that new instance for us. And now we get put back into our lab screen. We should see this new server pop up. Uh, there we go. It's titled one and it's pending. So once this finishes deploying, we'll get the green light and running just like all of the other machines. All right. And now our new machine has finished deploying. So we can see we get this little icon here so we can launch that Apache guacamole session over SSH. We'll click on that little connect button. It'll connect us with Apache guacamole and boom, we're in. We can start configuring it or doing whatever we want. So this is great from a management standpoint of the lab machines. But of course, if you want somebody to go through and attack the labs, you probably wouldn't give them access uh, over Apache guacamole. Oh, although maybe you might, right? It's however you want to configure it. Uh, but we have that open VPN option, which is already configured for attackers to, you know, connect and do their thing. So I'm going to close out of this. And that's really all there is from a machine specific level. Now let's start to look at the lab as a whole and some of the configuration options. So of course, we can go ahead and stop and reboot the lab. We can also create full lab snapshots. If we click on the snapshot. If we click on the take snapshot button here, it'll take a snapshot of all the machines, the full lab environment, and that way we can, you know, do complex attack paths and then revert after something were to go wrong or whatever you may have used for snapshots. All right, let's go ahead and go back to our lab. Now we can also template the lab. So for example, if we were done creating this lab and we wanted to share it with somebody else or, you know, even just template it and keep it private, you don't have to share it with somebody. We can go ahead and click on this template button here. We'll go ahead and give the template a name. We'll call it demo and go ahead and click on template. Now this will take a few minutes to run, but essentially what it's going to do is create a well, a template of our entire lab. That way you can go ahead and share that with somebody else. 
and they will have an exact copy of the current state of your lab. So this is how you go creating a lab and sharing it with somebody else. So one thing I'm working on now is creating a lab with you know five or 10 machines in it that you can hack through and compromise an AD domain and things like that, right? Once I finish that, I'm gonna save that as a template give everybody the access URL to that, and you'll get a fresh copy of that lab hosted on your own AWS account, so you have that whole private lab to work in by yourself. And I think that is just a phenomenal feature. I think it is really awesome, and I cannot wait to start using it. All right, so after a few minutes, this demo template has finished. Now we can go ahead and click on the demo template here, and right from here, you can go ahead and launch it if you'd like. So you could create your own templates and then, you know, build upon them in whatever ways you see fit, or you can go here and click on share template. If you were to do this, it's it would generate a link and you could then share that link with people and they could access a copy of this lab. So this is a really easy way for you to create these cybersecurity labs, share them with other people without having to do any automation work. Snap labs takes care of that all for you for free. I think that's pretty cool. So, you know, that's how we can go through and do some lab templates. And, you know, you could go through and browse all these other templates that are publicly available. I'd imagine as Snap Labs, you know, is around for a longer period of time, there'll be more public templates available. As of recording, the Community Edition has just launched today. So, you know, this is what they've got on launch day, but I'm sure many more are going to be coming. You know, I know I personally will be creating some, so I'm very excited for it. Let's go back into our AD lab that we had running and take a look at some of the other options that we have. So we took a look at the templating. Uh, we talked about the lab snapshots. You can go ahead and take a full lab snapshot and revert to them if you'd like. We have the VPN configs. So here's where you could just generate your VPN configuration packs. So we could have like a demo VPN here. The access would be as the attacker. Go ahead and create that. That will go ahead and generate our VPN configuration. So we could go ahead and download that connection pack or revoke it if we need to, right? So this is what you could distribute to people. If you wanted to host a lab, just have them connect to it via a VPN. You know, you could do it that way if you'd like. Now, another awesome feature is a network diagram. As you go through and build labs and snap labs, they automatically generate this nice network diagram for you, which is super useful as these labs start to get bigger and more complex. You know, if you have 20, 50, 100 machines in here, it can be really hard to keep track of that on pen and paper. So having this nice little uh, diagram here can really help and you can move it around if you want. If you get frustrated trying to hack into a lab, you could thrash it all around and take your anger out on the lab. I think that's very acceptable. Now, another tab that they have here is the documentation. So when you create the labs, you should definitely create documentation for them. Yes, you, I'm talking to you, you should document the things you create, right? So it's it's nice, they give you a nice little template here for some documentation, so you know how to you know write some decent looking docs if you'd like to create a public lab. Uh, and that way when you go to revisit it a month later, you don't forget what it was. I've certainly done that before, uh, but Anyways, you know, you get you get the idea. They have the documentation. You can upload files here and you can embed videos in this documentation. You can do all sorts of things like that, right? So if you create a lab and create video walkthroughs for each box, you can go through and embed them in this readme file. So when you template the lab and share it with people, they are directed right to your walkthrough videos and things like that. So it really works out great. Now let's take a look at these settings here. So this is the settings for the lab. Now one amazing feature which I highly suggest that you utilize is the auto off feature. What this will do is that if you're inactive at the Snap Labs dashboard for a certain period of time, it will automatically power your labs off, which can save you a ton of money. If you have 20 AWS instances running and you forget about it and let them run for a month, you're going to be very sad when you get that very expensive bill, right? So I would definitely use this auto off feature. I set it to two hours. You know, if I'm not using it for two hours, shut the lab off. It doesn't delete the lab, it just powers it off. So you can turn it right back on. Usually no harm done, right? So um, very, very useful feature there. You also get some interesting analytics like the total time run um, and the estimated running cost of the lab. So, you know, again, this is not the concrete running cost. You know, you can't calculate this down to the penny of what it will cost you, but it's a rough idea of what it would take to run the lab. And some of them might seem expensive. Like you might look at one, it's, well, it's a dollar an hour. And yes, that may sound expensive, but keep in mind, you only need to pay while you're running the lab. Well, there are some storage fees and stuff in AWS, but they're, they're very little, right? 
But, you know, if it's a dollar an hour and you want to hack, you know, for eight hours a day on the weekends, you're looking at, you know, roughly $16 a week for runtime, you know, some small storage fees as well. But it's not going to be extremely expensive in the long haul, which I think is really cool. So now we can look at some of the networking configurations as well. So you have your default subnets, you can go through and add new subnets in there, you know, all that kind of networking stuff that you would want to do. Then we can go ahead and configure DHCP for the lab. So, you know, the, the donation name the dns servers and things like that right so in case you want to tweak any of the dns or sorry dhcp configurations in the lab you can do that and then also with the templating stuff there's another place right here where you could template the lab and then also the delete button is kind of tucked away here so if you're done with the lab you don't want to use it anymore you don't want to store it anymore you can go ahead and delete it and it'll go ahead and scrub everything out of your aws account now, if you get stuck and have any questions with the Snap Lab stuff, they link to their knowledge base here. So if you open this up, they have some documentation on how to do all sorts of different things in there, uh, which can be really helpful. I've had to reference this a few times when I was confused about something, uh, but I think the docs are you know, pretty decent enough that you can get through and figure things out. Now, the other thing I wanna talk about is some of the account settings. So if we go to the settings here for your account, there is one thing that you can do, which is enable MFA, which I would certainly do. It's awesome that they allow you to do this because uh, you don't want somebody to gain access to your Snap Labs account, which is linked to AWS and rack up a huge bill for you. That would be a very sad day, right? Now, another thing you can do is go ahead and forget your AWS account. So if you wanna link a different AWS account to that, you can go ahead and do that or go ahead and delete the account. Before you go, I do wanna make one important point here. Since Snap Labs is integrating with your AWS account, I would be sure to check your AWS account after you're done using it, just to make sure that no snags are hit along the way and to make sure that it's cleaned up after itself, right? I haven't had any issues with it personally, but you just never know and you don't want to have some AWS instances running for a long time that you didn't know about because you could definitely rack up a bill. So if you're going to go ahead and delete a lab or stop it, just go through and look in your EC2 AWS instances and just verify that they're in the state that you think they're in before walking away from your desk for a few days, right? So that's basically everything that I have to say about Snap Labs. I've been using this for about a month now, and I think that it is an awesome product. If you're excited about seeing more lab building and hacking videos or getting access to my free hacking labs that I'll be building, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button down below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.